Although work on the Dallas-Fort Worth Regional Airport is progressing and there is no threat of any work stoppage, the Fort Worth Building and Trades Council is doing whatever it thinks necessary to ensure the wage scale at once. In Fort Worth today, District Judge Joe Spurlock granted a temporary restraining order to the Trades Council, which prohibits the city councils of Dallas and Fort Worth from granting any contracts with specific wage scales until a hearing has been granted to the union. The Trades Council attorney is Tom Upchurch. I talked with him earlier about the matter. Currently, they're receiving wages that are perhaps a dollar more than the proposed draft, which uh, Hearing Officer Graham uh, handed me the morning of the hearing. And I do not have the uh, employer's payroll record, so had I not been allowed to put on, had I been allowed to put on oral testimony, we'd have been able to show that there are great discrepancies in his findings and those which uh, we know are now currently, uh, the wages we know are now currently being paid. Well, the very fact that you asked for this order makes it obvious that you thought it was necessary. Why? Well, in the first place, I think that uh, it's clear on Monday and Tuesday of this coming week, the uh, Mr. Graham was going to ask each of the city councils to approve his proposed uh, uh, wage draft. And I have asked uh, and have received the restraining order to prevent this from being done until we have a hearing and we're able to put into the record what the wages are that are actually being paid on that project right now in Tarrant County. Uh, then uh, the, uh, we have something uh, f favorable to our side of it, a much higher rate for the uh, two uh, city commissions to consider. Whether the Fort Worth City Council will attempt to hold a meeting on Monday, which is Allen Bean Day, remains to be seen. But one thing's for certain, if they do, they'll not be able to let any contracts just yet on the regional airport complex. This is Gene Thomas, Channel 8 News at the Dallas-Fort Worth Regional Airport. that trip and I'm in daily telephone conver conversation with the people over there. Uh, I hope so. That would be following our original request to the North Vietnamese and the Pathet Lao leaders last weekend in the past few days, we have contacted the following countries through diplomatic channels, seeking their assistance in gaining entrance to North Vietnam to bring Christmas to these prisoners. These countries are Russia, Poland, India, Sweden, and the United Nations. We presently have United We Stand teams working in Bangkok, Thailand, Vientiane, Laos, and Phnom Penh, Cambodia, making preparations for our arrival. Hundreds of letters and telephone calls have been received expressing encouragement for this trip and appreciation for these efforts. Again and again we are asked, what can I do? Uh, basically and foremost, I'm opposed to the federal bill because I am opposed to federal regulation of the insurance industry in any of its aspects. 
do you feel that the states could do any better a job of regulating insurance companies than the U.S. government can? I certainly do. Why? Historically, the states have always regulated the insurance industry, and I think they have done a tremendous job through the years. I, I don't think the states have to take uh, second place to anyone in the job they've done in handling the insurance industry. And it leaves the insurance industry at the local level where I think it should be. In keeping with the purpose of our trip and the Christmas season, the first of the two airplanes going to Asia is being named Peace on Earth. The second of the two airplanes is being named Goodwill Toward Men. We have also leased a third airplane. It is being named the Spirit of Christmas. This airplane will fly to Europe on a very important mission relating to the prisoners on Christmas Day. The details of this trip will be announced later. We will leave Dallas approximately 8 p.m. Sunday, December the 21st. The first leg of our trip is to Los Angeles. In a large warehouse in Los Angeles airport, packages are pouring in from wives, children, and parents of prisoners of war from all over the country. In addition, hundreds of individuals and companies from all over the United States have contributed specific items of clothing and medicine that are needed by the prisoners. A large team is working to package these items. Truly, the spirit of Christmas fills this warehouse. They're going to rule for us. The odds are still very heavily against us, but we have something there that we can uh, take up uh, and go to court on again if we had to. Back last October, early in October when this council was formed, uh, it, it was reportedly formed to keep these tensions from becoming insurmountable. Now it seems that the council is acting as a block in fighting the city council. Uh, it appears that way on the surface. Is that true? on this airport. What we're doing is trying to preserve whatever legal rights that we have. I feel to some degree uh, we were being blocked by the two councils from being able to present testimony so that we would have a fair shake. Uh, after all, we're not trying to unionize people on that job. We're simply trying to make an effort to continue to maintain the wage structure that we believe has been arrived at through collective bargaining. If you go in and allow these people to... Uh, promulgate a wage structure that is not even realistic, that does not reflect the wages actually being paid, you're going to actually drop the wage schedule of all the uh, workers on jobs in the city. We're not in any way impeding progress. We've not called any strikes. We do not intend to, and uh, the council has functioned in a very responsible manner. We have gone to the two city councils, and we asked them uh, to let us know when they were going to... Uh, uh, published bid so that we could have hearings such as we requested on the 18th. If you will remember, we had asked several times to uh, be informed when they would uh, begin the next phase, this phase 1A. Uh, this was kept a closely guarded secret. We were not informed, and in fact, uh, they uh, published bids with wage information on them that did not even reflect the payroll out there. Then, when we were finally given a hearing, on the morning of the hearing, they even gave us another proposed draft and then said, well, we're not going to let you have oral testimony. Fair play is all that's being asked for here. We have only asked this judge to see that we have a hearing. We don't know whether we'll even prevail. We may lose in that hearing. But this is a legal avenue uh, that's being, uh, uh, we're taking this type of a step. It's responsible. We're not going to do anything knowingly that's unlawful. We will do everything that we can to see that this airport is built. We just want to have a part in it. Thank you. You bet. Why did you feel the filing for this restraining order was necessary? Okay, one more. <clears throat> Back in October when the council was formed, it was allegedly formed to solve problems and keep problems from becoming insurmountable. And now it appears the council is fighting the city government. 
Is that a true statement? Okay. Now you've seen where my downfall is.